going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And sorry for the length of time it has been since my last one. I have been extremely busy and hence the content has suffered. But today I want to talk through and answer a question that I have been getting a ton. And that is, what do you think of the 200 to 500 f 5.6 from nikon um and i didn't want to be one of those guys who you know has had the lens in his hand for a couple of hours something like that and then makes a review so i borrowed it from mps i've been using it for the last couple of weeks and so i'm going to walk you through my thoughts feelings about this lens and where i think it sits as an investment for wildlife photography but yeah really good let's crack on and take some pictures oh and by the way, for those people asking about trousers, uh, because that question's come up because I didn't answer it in my what clothing video, Foul Raven, absolutely brilliant. So this afternoon I'm out, you know, once again with the lens in my hand, um, just looking across for some different subjects. Red Kai up behind me that hopefully if it comes a bit nearer might give some good options for testing it bird in flight. But you know, the 200 to 500 when it was introduced about a year ago, I immediately knew it was gonna get a lot of interest from the wildlife photography community. Um, the focal range from 200 to 500 is pretty much perfect whether you shoot uh, mammals or birds. And if you, you know, pair that up with a DX camera, you're getting a huge amount of focal length in a pretty reasonably compact and affordable package. And when it was first introduced, I thought it'd be more two and a half thousand rather than the 1200 pound mark. And so a lens at this price, um, I was really interested to put it for its paces and see how good it was out in the field. And I must say so far, I really am impressed. So just floating over the trees behind me as I was filming that was a red kite and he's just circling through and there was one of the first times I've really got to um, use it for bird in flight and it did pick up the focus quite fast you know when it came straight down the lens towards me there was a moment when it lost focus but you find that even on top quality lenses that when birds track straight down the lens towards you, they find it hard to pick up. But overall, as I was moving there, changing from 200 to 500 mil, depending on the composition I wanted to look for, the lens tracked very well. And using the D850's autofocus system, it, it didn't really lose it at any point. That's really nice to see. Um, you know, that's one thing that I found with the autofocus system so far, is that when I've been using it, uh, be it for smaller subjects, you know, or even with coots the other morning when I was shooting some, uh, some dawn stuff, it really did work well. Um, the focus isn't the fastest, it's nowhere near uh, what you're gonna find on a 300 2.8 or a 70 to 200 2.8. But of course, you don't expect that. However, what you do get is a very effective autofocus system that picks up the subject and when it gets it, it tracks it very consistently and it doesn't seem to lose it um, too often. Now that of course will be um, dependent as well on the camera that you're using. Um, but with the D500 that I've been pairing this with, as well as the 850 that have the same autofocus system, it has worked really, really well. Um, and I've been very impressed by the autofocus consistency of the lens out in the field. Oh, right. Let's move on. So I'm just out walking through uh, the local tracks and trails, checking the woods to see if there's any deer and checking the fields for hares. And of course, in a typical British springtime fashion, it started to rain. Um, and I'm not too worried about the lens in terms of that because I know it's got pretty good weather sealing. I mean, it's nowhere near what you get on a, um, one of the prime lenses on the pro grade stuff, but I know it's gonna deal with, you know, some light showers and things like that. If it gets really heavy, I might put a cover on it, um, but I'm certainly not worried um, in terms of shooting in, in rougher conditions. And that's something that's really important um, when you're looking for a lens for wildlife photography. Because, you know, if you are so worried all the time that you know, any moisture is going to get in and it's going to ruin it. You're not going to be out shooting and, and spending time watching wildlife and getting those shots. You know, I don't want to have to pull something out of my bag to cover up my camera every time there's a bit of rain. And with this lens, you know, in terms of its build quality, I don't feel like that's something I'm going to have to worry about too much. Of course, you know, when it really starts to throwing it down and um, putting a cover and having that on is going to keep it good. And one of the key things with this sort of lens is that sand is certainly going to be an issue. 
the fact that it's not internal zoom means that if you're on a beach and you're going forward and back, you're gonna suck sand inside and you're gonna get that gritty feel that you often get. Something that isn't as much of a problem on some of the pro spec lenses due to the fact that they're not an, inter uh, they're not an external zoom. But hopefully with care and attention, that shouldn't be a problem and you know, in all terms, with our gear, when we use it out on location, we've got to look after it and, and keep it clean when we get home. But you know, with the conditions like today, a bit of mixed rain, I'm not worrying about this at all. Just cracking on, seeing what I can find uh, and hopefully getting some pictures. But uh, with the conditions like they are, I'm not finding too much uh, to point my lens to. Um, but it is a good chance to test it out in different conditions and, and just see how it's faring. But with the red kite of earlier, it's not too bad day. Now one of the most useful things about the 200-500 f5.6 is the fact that it is a zoom lens. Now I'm very much used to using prime lenses with my wildlife photography, my fixed 300 and stuff like that. But one of the problems that you come across with prime lenses is that you have to choose your composition um, ahead of time really. You know, you've got to work out where your subject's going to be and then you can only really react to it by moving your position, moving your feet um, to change the shot that you're going to get. And that's okay if you've got a subject that's reasonably confining and if you know that you're going to be able to move closer at certain points. But with some subjects or locations, if you're working from a hide or things like that, you don't have the option to be able to move all the time. And so a zoom, giving you those options to be flexible with your composition, is really handy and it's something that, you know, in using it, I found really nice. Just the chance to say, you know, I want to pull back, get a slightly light, wider approach is really useful and it means that you can create a different number of compositions from one location without having to move that can be really handy for your wildlife photography. Skylarks, really lovely to hear. So with any lens, one of the most important things is its ergonomics and how it feels to use for extended time out in the field. Now the 200 to 500, firstly, is a reasonably light lens for its size and focal length. You compare it to a 500 f4 and this just feels absolutely lovely to hold. Um, and even compared to my 300 2.8, um, it's still shaving a bit of weight off that's really handy. Now, as much as, um, that weight loss is fine on its own, it's really important about the design of the lens as well. What you'll find is when you pick it up, it's also balanced really nicely. Zoomed out to 500 mil, it's not kind of front heavy. That means that when you're low to the ground, working uh, you know, with your arms reasonably out in front of you, not a perfect position for hand holding, you don't find that the camera leans forward, especially when you've got a camera with a battery grip on the bottom. That's really nice for a comfortable hold um, and also for having that better telephoto technique uh, for those sharper images. Now, the lens itself does have a few areas where I personally am not 100% fond of. Um, and the main thing really is the way round the zoom and the focus ring are. Now for me, I'd much prefer the focus ring to be at front and the zoom to be at the back. Um, largely because when I've got my hand under the lens, I find that it sits just on the focus ring. That means that if I'm trying um, you know, to pick my way through foliage and I want to kind of pick up a subject, you'll see that suddenly my hand has to move back here to use the focus ring has to move to the back of the lens to use the focus ring. That immediately means that I've got um, more of a, well, less stable hand holding position uh, that adds that instability into my technique. It's really quite annoying. You know, if it was at the front here, when I'm holding, I'd still be able to manually focus um, without adding that instability into the lens. That is something you see on all the pro grade lenses. My 70 to 200, for example, the focus rings at the front. The new 180 to uh, 400 mil, the focus rings at the front. And that would have been a really nice way for that to be swapped round. Additionally, another thing that can be reasonably difficult is to zoom all the way from 500 back to 200. You have to turn at least twice to do the distance. And a lot of the time, you know, if you're going for a 500 mil shot, you're probably gonna be out fixed at 500. And if you're going for that landscape approach, then you're probably fixed back at 200. But it is a little bit of a problem. I do find one of the easiest ways is just to grab the ring and turn the camera before reframing up. You know, it's a really nice, quick way to do it. Just turn the camera and get back around you know, out forward like that. 
you know of course that turning the camera can be a bit of a faff when you're working in the field but you know it's something you'll get over but largely overall other than the focus ring I just wish it was at the front it's a really good lens to work with handheld and of course because it's that lighter weight as well as being really nicely balanced you can use it for a long period of time without your arms really starting to ache something that definitely couldn't be said for the larger 500 and 600 mil telephotos that definitely need uh, a tripod for those extended stakeouts but this is really really quite good to use uh, whatever kind of position you're in so this afternoon i've just been checking out a location that i know for brown hairs and unfortunately i haven't seen anything as yet but one quick tip if you're shooting you know over fields and stuff like that a great way to support your camera is using your camera bag itself you can see here that I've got it flat and it just gives me enough lift so I'm above the crop um, meaning I can focus on my subject but render that foreground and background out of focus um, whilst also maintaining a support for the long lens it keeps it a nice position so I can easily get down below um, kind of behind it and I don't have to kind of crick my neck and it also takes the pressure off my arms because this supports the weight and then all I've got to do is hold the camera and push down on the lens um, when I'm focusing and getting my shots. It's really easy to use, quick, back and forward, and it makes a fantastic support for working on location. You know, you don't always need a tripod um, for working low to the ground, especially if you can bump your ISO up a little bit and get that extra speed on your shutter. You know, this offers a really flexible and easy to carry support no matter where you're working. Right, so this afternoon I'm out with the 200-500 once again and uh, putting it for its paces for some back garden bird photography. Now, the reason I want to do some back garden bird photography is because it's a subject and a project that pretty much everyone has access to and therefore is quite simply something that probably a lot of people are going to do with this lens. Additionally, it's also a really tricky project to work on because small birds you know your blue tits your great tits house sparrows whatever you've got close to home they're really small and they move really fast that means they're an excellent subject to test the autofocus and the capabilities and and lock-on times of the lens when it's shooting smaller subjects now all you need for some garden photography is a selection of feeders a location where you're pulling the birds into and then a couple of perches so i've got a perch set up and i'll show you just how i've done that right now so setting up the perch, what I've done is used a pair of secateurs and I've cut myself off um, a couple of pieces of hawthorn that I got from the tree over there. Now what I've done is I've pruned it slightly um, so that it's a nice long single piece and the reason that I've used hawthorn is because it's a really thin branch. Now the thing is, <laughs> I see a lot of pictures and people's back garden bird photography and I always think that sometimes people use sticks that are just far too wide. Um, if you ever see birds perch out in the wild, you'll notice that they always stick to sticks that are roughly the same width as their feet. So for example, if you're photographing blue tits and great tits, this kind of small branch that's probably about three to four millimeters thick is absolutely perfect. Whereas if I used a thicker branch, they'd just look a bit weird. Um, so a quick tip, you know, just always think about that when you're setting up your perches for that more natural approach. And then simply what I've done is I've pruned off a couple of branches to keep it really flat and keep some nice positions for where the birds might sit. Um, and then that's all I need to do. Now final one thing you might want to do is make sure that your feeders are all over the side of the perch that you want your birds to focus on. If you leave them on the other side, they'll likely sit in the tree and never sit on your perch. That makes back garden photography a little bit difficult. Now also when you're setting up the perch, you need to think about your background. Now what I've got here is a bush that is probably about five, 10 meters off in the background. Um, and when I was looking at that, I was starting stood up. And when I was standing up, I'm pretty much eye level with the perch, um, getting a nice rendered kind of green background that was working for me earlier when it was a little bit brighter. But now that the sun started to go in and we've got more of this subtle um, nature to the light, what I've actually decided to do is drop myself down. The reason for this is that I'm now shooting up against the clouds. It makes that nice blue and white palette um, that's making much nicer pictures. And of course, as I'm getting a lot of um, blue tits and great tits in, the color palette 
of the birds also matches the background and foreground and also the um, you know the blossom that is on my, my perch that I've actually chosen for a far more natural looking and kind of subtly brought together image that I really like the look of. So now that the birds are coming back in I've got a group of uh, tits coming across the uh, road. I'm going to get back to it and shoot some pictures and then show you the sort of results that I'm getting. So I've been shooting this afternoon for a good couple of hours now, had a nice range of species coming in, uh, long-tailed tit, blue tit, great tit, as well as um, some really nice house sparrows along the hedge behind me, using this foliage to kind of blur out the foreground for some really nice shots. And overall, I've just been stunned by the performance of the 200 to 500. You know, for a lens at the 1200 pound mark, um, and especially one that would be compared to something like the Sigma 150-600 that I've used in the past or you know any of those kind of super zoom lenses I'd never been impressed before um, but after using this for the last couple of weeks and especially today with the birds in the garden I must admit I'm really blown away you know for the price the performance is excellent the sharpness that's coming out from these images whether I've got it on the D850 or the D500 that I've got here they just look amazing. The focus, okay, isn't the fastest, but it's very much comparable to a 150-500 Sigma or anything like that. And to be honest, it's much better, especially because it's a native Nikon lens. I really feel it's improved there. And what you're getting with that, that although it's a little bit slower, the lock-on when it gets there is excellent. You know, once it finds focus, gets on the subject you're after, it rarely loses it. And that's really important if you're tracking little subjects or trying to work with birds in flight. And I've been really impressed by that from the lens. The ergonomics overall are excellent, bar the you know fact that I don't really like the arrangement. I'd rather the focus ring was at the front and not the back. But using it on a tripod, that's not going to be too much of a problem. You know, as a lens for most people, I think it's going to be superb. If you pair it with something like a D500, 7500, you've got a fantastic range of focal length. You know, from 300mm all the way out to 750, that's pretty much perfect for pretty much all wildlife photography, really. Unless you're doing wide-angle approach or anything like that. And of course, you wouldn't be using a 200-500 for that. But, you know, the 5.6 aperture and everything like that, it is that compromise and the compromise allows it to be a price that pretty much most people can afford you know 1200 pound i think for this lens is a phenomenal value and a great deal for so many people who are wildlife photographers and you know the last couple of days it's really concreted in my mind that this lens is certainly one that i'm going to be recommending to so many people you know i've used it in the past thought it was really good when i tried it out but after having it for an even more extended period, it's just blown me away, really. You know, for the price, the performance, it just is definitely one of the best lenses you can buy for Nikon wildlife photography. And I think anyone would really be happy with this lens. But right, that's it for today. Uh, if you've got any more questions about the 200 to 500, drop them in the comments below. More than happy to get back to you. I'm gonna post a couple of pictures on my Instagram feed that I've shot with this over the next couple of days. The YouTube uh, feedback video is next on my list. I know so many people have been asking about it. I've just had so much on lately. That is coming soon. Um, and again, join me in the future for more wildlife photography content. But until then, I'm gonna crack on photographing some beautiful back garden birds. See ya.